those days when the computers were not there so easily available the brain is the best computer which was taught to us by a uh, uh, great captain joseph and uh, late captain rewari that brain is the best computer and and eyes are the best radar if we can use them in conjunction and of course with a backup of a, a practical seamanship i think the the results are you know much better much productive that's what i have been doing it so far the problem what we are coming across so far uh, as of now as what i see yes aids to navigation it definitely it is a boon it certainly is a boon because there was a time when we used to look at a navigation chart we used to plot the position and come back and you know do uh, uh, lookouts and everything here you get everything but how to optimize the usage the optimization of the usage of an egdis can also has to be harmonized with the practical knowledge of the seamanship and presently what is happening if i talk about with my personal experience as a master or as an auditor what is happening the rule number 5 the lookout has been given a back bencher in other words if i talk about off the record there is a redundancy as far as the rule number 5 is concerned the people do not pay attention to that i have seen many uh, you know officers even my officers who were sailing with me they would see the vessel uh, look at the vessel on the egdis or radar where where is when the visibility is fantastic they would probably uh, defer or head to look uh, you know Uh, directly in the line of sight so that is also one of the reason that over reliance on the electronic uh, aids because remember they are still construed as aids aids to navigation even the class or the imo anybody talk about the egg disk and, and all the electronic media uh, navigation uh, system it is still construed as the aids to navigation therefore uh, one is the over reliance on the electronic aids to navigation number two the practical knowledge of the seamanship which probably has to be i'm not saying inducted but it has to be many a times self inculcated because when we start thinking about one particular maneuver it gives us answer many a times like what i had been thought that if you have a problem and you start thinking about it probably you have you have won almost 50% of the battle so uh this is one thing what i am i'm saying i'm saying of course uh, aids to navigation i will not say it is not good it certainly is a boon but provided it is harmonized cohesively with your practical knowledge of seamanship it certainly will do wonders so now what is happening because of this accidents incidents which is happening owner definitely is feeling the crunch charter is feeling the crunch the insurance companies everybody is you know uh enjoy it end of the day it definitely is putting an extra pound extra ounce of uh, you know flesh on the on the on the owners charters but at the same time if we look at it from the lo longer uh, perspective it is also somewhere down the line affecting our livelihood because if we from the indian uh, mariners fraternity point of view if we are not if we are a judge as you know uh, not very so competent uh, uh, you know professionals then definitely it certainly is going to hit us below our belt and this is one of the major motivation which really helped me or which really uh, motivated me to come at this juncture to impart whatever the practical knowledge i can to share my legacy with my fellow mariners so uh captain gorov hello hello yes sir hello okay uh you want to go on the polling station uh yeah for the questionnaire or what yeah. is it like sure so i think uh, based on what you were saying we have two questions on uh, do you think the over reliance on electronic aids has increased for deck officers and if you feel yes uh, is it acceptable uh, those, those are the two questions which uh, we would like to ask from the attendees please yes sir i will say i will answer it separately let's see yeah, let let's first take the answers from the attendees uh, now uh, can i answer captain gorov or you are taking oh, some more question I, i think you can see the question let's have the replies from everyone come in 
uh, we'll okay. see how many uh, i mean what's the percentage of the replies and then we can take that if you can click on q and uh, i got to i got to learn captain malhotra's voice is not consistent voice issues so maybe some audio issues are there i believe so I think that was uh, some time back. Uh, I, I would imagine that's it. Okay. 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 So please uh, let me know, Captain uh, Gaurav, when I can uh, answer this query. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll uh, encourage all the participants to uh, please uh, um, uh, put in more answers. Please, uh, we've had about seventy-five percent of the people who have answered. Yeah, uh, you know, there's a question by Mr. B.B. Singh. As I said, I have, uh, this is a humble submission. Probably it's a typo error that, of course, I joined C in 1979. I was a direct cadet. I'm not an uh, ex-Rajendra. But yes, I've been almost two decades in command. I'm not a Rajendra or a Daphne cadet. That's what is the uh, question Mr. B.B. Singh has put, which I have already made a humble submission earlier that, you know, this may be a probably a typo error or something. And I, I apologize on that because I joined the sea in 1979 as a cadet. I was a direct cadet and thereafter uh, uh, did my cadetship with Wallums and then I switched over to Mobile and Chevron, did 18 odd uh, uh, years with oil majors and then, you know, with the with the offshore as a mooring master, etc., master, etc. Et right, sir. So, your, uh, so the answer to the question, uh, do you think over, uh, there's over reliance on electronics? Yet? Everyone is saying yes. Uh, let, let me just share the results also with everyone. So, so yeah, so everyone says that there is a little bit of over reliance on electronic aids. Uh, and if it is acceptable, 91% uh, uh, say no, it's not acceptable, and 9% say it's, it's acceptable. Um, so, yeah, that's. Uh, I agree with the I agree with the 91% lot because, see, the thing is that, as I said earlier, aids to navigation electronic aids to navigation it certainly is a boom when we go back to the era when there were no uh, egg disk or electronic navigations we used to do everything on chart then come uh, from the chart room and uh, onto the wheelhouse and do the lookout where here you've got served everything on the one platform but how to optimize the usage of it in an intelligent and a wise manner that's where i go with this 91 person vote yes the over-reliance of the ECDIS, upon the ECDIS, has many a places buggered the actual zeal, the zest, and the quest of a mariner by virtue of which he sees not, nothing beyond an ECDIS. And that is where, you know, the, the thing what we learn, let's say, let, let's talk about something, uh, since you guys are, uh, Captain Gora, very much closely liaised with the HR. When we go for an in any interview, the first thing uh, the, uh, the the person who is interviewing is going to check your or trying to assess or interview and try to find out your attitude. If your attitude is positive, proactive, that is the second thing which we talk about. And there have been many scenarios, even a senior officer or so senior personnel has not been offered a job instead a junior or a new uh, young blood has been offered a job. Why? Because of the positive attitude. And as we know, if we add up the attitude, that is the only thing which makes 100%, not even the skills, not even your aptitude, not even your gray matter or your experience. Nothing makes 100%. It's only the attitude. Now, coming from that point of, uh, from, from uh, coming from there, what I'm trying to put forward, I'm trying to make a, you know, a uh, let's say a submission from the point of view what I have come across that yes we need to groom our youngsters in such a manner that yes you guys are too good computer savvy which at least for a person of my age may not be so computer savvy because youngsters are too good now because of that they are very much over reliant on like this and their seamanship uh, seamanship skills the practical navigation skills are almost getting redundant like for instance uh, I'll share with uh, with you, uh, you know, when I am stepping on board, I ask many of uh, my officers, even for a compass error, there's a computer program, but if I ask them to use the, the, the tables, the almanac or the tables, they probably will take much time, much more time than what I can do it. Same thing for shooting a star or a sun or a moon. I can still take a sight. So the idea is 
when we built any any uh, let's say monument or any building if the foundation is not good if the foundation is weak doesn't matter you make a five star or a seven star hotel or any kind of a, you know a, a state of the art building it certainly will fall sometime or the other and earlier than the compared to a, to a to a building or a monument which has got a very strong foundation so we need to have we need to groom our youngsters to have a strong foundation and yes if we can groom them from with a strong foundation and then they harmonize this cohesively with the electronic media trust me it will do wonders it will do wonders hello hello yes yes we can hear you sir go ahead please yeah, so this is the first part of the uh, 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 question which was asked. What was the, what was the second question, Captain Godre? Could you please appraise me of that, sir? Sure, sir. So I think there was, I mean, a follow-up to it. If the over-reliance is acceptable or not. And to the acceptable... No, I, I, my personal perspective, I'm not here to... Put my words into but someone's I mouth, but my view of the participants. Uh, I think uh, in view of the time, let's let's uh, move on to the next slide. Then, right, sir. Okay, so am I on, uh, Captain Gorov? Or yes, sir, you are on. You are on. Please go ahead. Okay, sir. now on this slide, what I said earlier that you know uh, what uh, we were imparted or the legacy which was imparted by a great old. Uh, 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 you know, mariners. Uh, the only two names comes to my mind across from my mind is Captain Joseph and Ravari. Captain Joseph being a Masiya, and same thing, Captain Ravari. The way they were trying to instill into us, the way they were trying to induct this practical seamanship and knowledge into us, and likewise, when we stepped on board as a cadet, of course, uh, the people, uh, you know, my comrades who probably are of my same uh, same age group and uh, have uh, sailed uh, almost the same time. You know, even as a cadet, we were not allowed to come into the bridge. We used to be asked to maintain a lookout on the bridge wing at all times. To come into the bridge wing was like something, you know, uh, uh, an opportunity which we never used to miss out. In the in in in, uh, in other words, like if I see uh, when I was a cadet, I when I used to see a third mate is taking an error or a second mate is taking a sight, I was more inquisitive to learn what is it it is something similar as the human nature when you give somebody serve to him on the platter he or she will not uh, you know realize the value of what he or she is being served but when you deprive the same person i'm not no i'm not trying to say we must do it i'm just trying to say what was the modus operandi around four decades ago or uh, approximately when i was a cadet uh, cadet so because we were so much deprived the first opportunity, what we got, means I uh, recall after about six months of time of my cadetship, because those days the cadetship used to be 36 months. Six months of time of my cadetship, when I used to be given an opportunity to keep a watch with a third mate, second mate, or a mate, I used to be more focused to pick up, to learn more and more things, what I can, which I was not aware of it. I was probably ignorant. So that's what it is. It's a human nature. The more you deprive a human, uh, uh, you know, a human of something, the more he will have that kind of inquisitive, inquisitiveness, the zeal, and the zest, and the quest to try to do the, you know, to, to learn the more or to, to maximize or to optimize with that learning. But in today's era, when we look at the cadets, uh, you know, with due respect, they are like small babies and they are there all the time on the bridge. After doing, say, say, one year or 18 months, whatever is their tenure, when you interview them, they hardly have picked up anything. They only know that Egdes, yes, I can run Egdes. This is Transas, this is some other make. Yes, I can work on it. Okay, that's fantastic, great. But how about the practical knowledge? When we talk about, let's say, I give you one very small question. I ask my, my uh, what do you call this, uh, my mates, that okay, you calculate a distance on GPS from point A to point B. On GPS, I'm saying. When the distance is coming more than 600 nautical miles, it will not give you the correct distance. Instead, if you use the tables and uh, do it with a DMP, difference of meridional part, you will get a correct distance. Why? Because the GPS doesn't have the MP and DMP thing fed into it. 
However, in Ignis, it is so. So this is a very small example I'm giving that when we don't have a principles clear and we are doing a computer game, because to me, if I don't have my fundamentals correct, if I don't have my basics correct as far as the practical seamanship or the ship handling is concerned, it's like video game I'm playing. I can probably download a few video games on my computer and run the ship from here. So that's where it's making a difference. That that's what I what I understand that we have to because I'm also on uh, almost 57. I may be sailing for another two or three years. So to pass on this legacy to a young mariners that okay, fine, you're good in electronics. We respect you. You're good in computers. Fantastic. No no problem. But do you know that what is the base on which all these things have been gathered or have been assimilated, all the data which has been assimilated, be it on a disk or any other electronic things? That is something we need to groom our youngsters in a way that they have to get into this habit of knowing. And like a child, when a small baby uh, boy girl is there when, up to uh, the age of six or seven years he or she always asks you know he or she is always inquisitive uh, 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 with his parents to find out like you know what is this what is that and that sort of inquisitiveness attitude that sort of grooming we need to instill need to induct we need to encourage them with once that is done, then definitely, probably, probably they will do much better things than what we have done because we were the one who did not have so much of access to the electronic uh, aids and all that. Of course, for the last almost two decades, it has already been there. But I'm saying if I was groomed in, in the today's scenario in, in a positive manner with the practical seamanship, along with, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, in cognizance with the, with the uh, electronic aids to navigation, Probably, I think I would have been, you know, a much better ma uh, mariner or much better uh, ship handler. Because whatever we have is a crude practical knowledge basis, what all maneuvers, jobs we have uh, done by ourselves. Then coming to rule number five, what I said earlier. Rule number five, as I say, the lookout. I, I will ask her for a polling. Uh, at least for the sailing masters, senior officers. Let's see how due diligently do we uh, do we and our subordinates, our comrades, follow it up. Because I, I recall my last vessel also. I've been constantly sailing and doing mooring master stints whenever I get it. Uh, whenever I come up on the bridge, I find my second. Uh, you know, I will not say uh, my mates are always homed onto the radar or homed onto the egg disc. The other thing is that the other problem which is happening is people, uh, you know, uh, on the AI's target, this is a very good example probably I can uh, impart. They want to lock on to the AI's targets and, uh, you know, even on cast mode, even on radars. Now, we know what how dangerous could it be because the AI's is electronic signal. When you are getting uh, an echo on the radar, which is working on the vector mode. Why can't we lock a uh, object on a vector mode instead of locking it on the on the AI's target? Because that is the spurious thing. If there is a problem with the electronic signal, it will give you a different heading, different speed, and different CPA. This is also another thing. And another thing I'll share with you that you know, uh, say for example, when we talk about the uh, the wind direction, current, and all that. Honestly speaking, when I ask my mates, okay, yeah, just tell me what is the wind direction and all that. I agree. I, I, I will, I will, uh, uh, I hope my, you know, colleagues will agree with me that from our perspective, you should look at see, okay, this is the wind direction. This is the sea. This is the swell. But here they have to look into the this. They have to look into some, uh, you know, electronic thing. They don't have that judgment. So this is what I'm trying to, I'm trying to put forward. Now, if, if a person has that sort of judgment, sure. he will be able to do a better job. I, I'll give one example to you, which I have personally experienced. I was in the Baltic Sea, uh, where there is a, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, dispute or a inter uh, interference between GPS and GLONASS. And what happened, I was trying to approach a channel somewhere, Ukraine, I forgot the 
port's name and I had a gyro failure. And at that point of time, when I used, when I was looking at my, my uh, position on the egg disc, it was hovering everywhere, every nook and corner of the egg disc. The other thing which was against me, because uh, most of the mariners who have been there or the masters, they would probably recall, there's a magnetic anomaly. There's a pro there is approximately, I'm talking about 2016 or 17 when I was there, when this happened with me. 26 degrees of magnetic anomaly. I have radar. I don't have position because of the, uh, uh, you know, conflict between GPS and GLONASS. Every few seconds, I find my position is, you know, running all the, throughout the perimeter of the egg disk. And of course, I have to take my DR. At that point of time, of course, I knew that I'm all alone because for the reasons what I've just mentioned, because once this electronic thing is gone for a, for a, for a, you know, six, they are finished. Finished until right, such time they have uh, the time check. Uh, we have another seven, eight minutes for the presentation. I mean, we already been uh, right, sir. Please go ahead. Over to you, sir. Just, just uh, sorry. sorry, I can speak now, or uh, it's a question answer time. No, no, please, sir. I, I think we need to. So, we'll take the questions after the presentation finishes. Uh, okay, but okay, I just okay. to give you a time check. Uh, we have another uh, okay, thank you. Minutes or so remaining. Thank you. So, so coming to this point, now this is a very good or live example. Of course, I was all alone and it was at night. The GPS is not giving me correct position because of the Glona GPS interference. The magnetic compass has gone 26 degrees anomaly. I've got a gyro failure and there I had to maneuver. And when the pilot comes and he asks me, the captain, I said, sorry, this is it. Pilot says, sorry, captain, I'm running away. I, I cannot handle the ship. Okay. In that situation, I had to take her to a safe haven, anchor the vessel, ask for immediate Gyro technician, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what I'm trying to, gentlemen, try uh, what I'm trying to put forward that electronic media, electronic navigation is fantastic. It's a definitely boon. It's a bliss to us. But we need to get our foundations right. We need to go back to the basics. Till such time, we don't learn this. We will not be able to cope up because solas. When when we have two exits, it is for hundred percent redundancy. But one. One case out of 100, if suppose both of them are on blink, then what do we do? Okay, it doesn't happen, uh, I'm saying. Uh, you, we talk about a hypothetical situation. Uh, I, I'm also sharing with you, like for example, when the charts were there, there had been many times the ports were uh, coming and uh, as a master, you don't have the chart. You ask the company to send you the you know, uh, scan chart over the email and then you ask second way to join A4 size and then that's how you, you maneuver or you navigate. But at the same time, you cannot be 100% reliant on that. Or many times the agents give you the local chart. Yes, but there is no authentication because it doesn't have a kind of a credibility cred uh, credentials from the uh, British uh, Admiralty or the other uh, autonomous authority. It is just a general chart. Now, if I don't have anything, I will, of course, use it as a tool. But my practical sense, my practical seamanship, my approach, my practical knowledge, which is all by within me, my eyes, my brain, how I take this decision, how I'm going to approach. All these things will be, which is there in me, which none of the, uh, no exodus will teach you. So, uh, I think I've already <laughs> talked quite a bit on that, uh, but it was a good thing uh, for me also, a brainstorming session that I remembered a few things. So, as I said, in consultation with, my, with many shipping companies and my colleagues, senior masters, and, uh, you know, unanimously, we came to this conclusion that, you know, what I'm doing here, which I've been encouraged upon, that, yes, you please keep doing it and we will support you by trying to, you know, uh, ask our, on, uh, you know, young masters or uh, uh, the mates who are being uh, to be promoted uh, to liaise with you. And furthermore, from uh, I have so far uploaded 15 lectures uh, up to lecture number 12. I, it's all uh, free for the for the. Uh, uh, people uh, from lecture number 13 it has been coming on a different portal now from lecture number 13 I'm trying to harmonize the the practical maneuver along with the uh, you know uh, the the competency exams when I say competency exams is for the viva orals for a mate or a, for a second mate so that's how I'm designing the lectures after 30 
because from lecture number 13, uh, 14, and 15, I've started doing uh, Med Moor and the Baltic Moor and uh, one more Moor, what I've done is uh, Standing Moor and Running Moor. Like, for example, I've uh, uploaded a short video on the YouTube, Standing Moor and Running Moor. Uh, uh, I have to explain when we should be uh, using a standing moor and when we should be using a running moor i have differentiated which i hope you'll appreciate you can also must have done a lot of uh, search which has not been explained I, I at least i have not seen it anywhere correct please uh, correct me if i'm wrong and whatever lectures i'm uploading it's under my banner of marine solution which you guys will see me on my facebook my youtube also on the linkedin so uh, mr please do not hesitate to contact me I've also mentioned my mobile number, my email address and everything. Whatever queries you may have, I'll be more than happy to cater to it. To have one team and one perspective. Uh, yes, Captain Gaurav. Right, sir. We'll, we'll take a poll from the candidates. We basically wanted to uh, understand... Uh, do you feel social media is an effective way of uh, carrying our e-learning? So basically through YouTube. And yes, sir, I fully concur because now with this COVID-19 lockdown, even yeah. our DG shipping worldwide, it is e-learning is a mantra. E-learning is a mantra. It's a question to the participants as such. Uh, if, okay. Uh, okay. if they feel uh, the social media is an effective way of carrying the e-learning. And have they undertaken any e-learning modules webinar in the past three months? Uh, and uh, have to subscribe to any marine education oriented YouTube channels. So, 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 so let's uh, just to have an understanding from the audience on how active uh, or, or how effective is the uh, e-learning uh, uh, module and how, if it is relevant for the marine sector as well. So that's the... Uh, Captain Gaurav, uh, can I just take you a few seconds? There's a question with Mr. Saurabh Oak has asked me. I just would like to give an uh, answer in two or three words, if you allow me. Sure, sir. I think what, what I'm, I'm thinking is, sir, that let's uh, uh, take the questions at the end, end of the webinar. Take it. Okay, understood. Understood. Right, so we, we have had the answers from uh, everyone. So I think 92% so of the people feel that social media is a uh, good way and uh, let me share the results as well is a, a good way of uh, doing the e-learning and uh, they have undertaken an 81% uh, have undertaken an e-learning module or a webinar in the past three months and um, so I think it's, it's, it's about half of them uh, have subscribed to a marine education oriented YouTube channel so, so that gives us a perspective of uh, the audience uh, uh, there are Two questions, Captain Gaurav, I'd like to answer. I think yes. one is from our colleague, Mr. S or Captain Sanjeev Dhanda, if I see the uh, thing correctly. Uh, he says, I thought topic for today webinar was related to ship handling. Yes, sir, it is related to ship handling. Now, the ship handling and the hydrodynamics, uh, I have ex been explaining on YouTube. As you know, the hydrodynamics is a, and ship handling is a very vast subject. Okay. What I've done, sir, uh, uh, Captain Sanjeev Dhanda, uh, what I've done is that I have simplified the hydrodynamics in such a manner that when I'm explaining, explaining this, because I do the same thing training when I'm on board, even an OS or an oiler will also be uh, able to understand because if you see my few lectures, I think number one, two or three or maybe four lectures, I have already explained the hydrodynamics in a very simplified manner, which uh, I, I realized, you know, when I get the feedback that, most of the even junior ranks also have been able to take the things back productively. Uh, uh, so in case uh, uh, Sanjeev Dhanda sahab, you have any queries, you can just give me a question. I will answer you. That's not a problem. I, I think, uh, just, I just add on to that, uh, Captain Nanda and Utpal, you will have the same question. Uh, I think the objective of this session was, uh, and then it was, maybe it was uh, wrongly this thing, but the, was to tell that there is a um, uh, uh, resource available on YouTube for us to go and uh, see, uh, uh, learn about marine handling over there. But I, uh, one of the other uh, thing over on, on this uh, webinar was that how, how did you know that whole evolution happened? Why is it there? 
what is the value that uh, that, that uh, those YouTube videos will give it to you, and, and and what is the differentiation over there? I think that's what Captain Puneet has been, uh, you know, uh, trying to focus over here. Um, you can uh, because on the ship handling part as such, you can see the videos. We all can see the videos, and we will have an understanding uh, of them. They're uh, free to. Uh, see, I, I hope that answers the question, Captain. No, I agree. No, uh, Captain Sab, uh, Captain Gaurav Sab, and Captain Dhanda Sab, uh, I agree with your queries because I always take critics in a positive manner. So, uh, Dhanda Sab, the thing is that I have explained each and everything in a such a simplified manner, uh, with due respect, which has been uh, you know appraised worldwide and getting a uh, lot of feedback worldwide. Coming to Saurabh, Mr. Saurabh Oak's question, I don't know whether it's Captain Chief Officer, but I'll say Mr. Saurabh Oak. The thing is that anti-grounding, what you talk about, I've explained this in one of my fourth or third or fourth lecture. The magic word is how to calculate the minimum controlling depth. I have given a full a format uh, of this explanation that the magical word of minimum controlling depth. Because once we have calculated the minimum controlling depth, as I've already shown uh, in my one of the YouTube uh, lecture, only after that. The second mate should lay the course on like this that okay with the minimum controlling depth which, which has all the parameters which you know uh, i'm not i'm just trying to cut short because of the time but please do have a look at this and you will get the answer to this grounding uh, into uh, anti-grounding thing now anti-grounding is of course relevant to the minimum controlling depth i've explained this i've explained squat uh, and uh, all the aspects related to that in my lecture so the idea was to convey to you that you know many of you guys may not know so i have already uploaded those uh, things for you all guys for your benefits for your benefit on youtube in case you have any more further queries please do not not fully with captain gaurav what he said that our agenda was to introduce this podium to you that yes sir this is it if you'd like to utilize please do and through e-learning only we are trying to promulgate this because that is the mantra so uh, if you have any queries, please do let me know. I'm there to help you out, sir. Uh, there's a question, Captain Gaurav, can I answer? In the shipping industry, we Indians are losing our standard. Is it because of our over-reliance on the e-equipment? Uh, may I answer this, sir? Please, sir, go ahead. Okay. Yes, sir, Mr. Thomas uh, Gibson. Uh, yes, sir, I will. I will not like, you know, try to ratify as an Indian, I'll take it as a mariner because a mariner community is worldwide when we are sailing with the multinational culture, you know, we are in the same boat. So I would take from my uh, perspective as mariners, yes, uh, definitely. If we are having so many accidents and incidents in one given uh, quarter or six monthly or, you know, annually where owners are losing, uh, you know, uh, left, right, and center. Then definitely, owners are also you know smart and intelligent enough to see okay, what all national during their time this this fiasco took place, and that's up to them to decide. But yes, uh, since I've been sailing most of the time, so at least ninety to ninety-five uh, percent of my uh, command experience has been with the eleven to, uh, to twelve nationalities out of a crew of thirty odd uh, you know crew on board. I always had been taking as a, you know, my maritime fraternity, which is, which goes worldwide. But yes, when you try to chalk out, yes, I said earlier, which I do have been a, a part of it, that when we were inducted into the system, our seniors, I do uh, felicitate with uh, them because what they have inducted into us today has probably taken us for a long, long inning because of a foundation what they had, you know, straightened it out and they had helped us build a foundation with their mentorship. And that's what we are trying to do. So uh, over-reliance, definitely, I agree with you, is not good. It is definitely going to affect our livelihood. End of the day, it's going to hit us below our belts. Hello. Yes, sir, understood. Okay, sir. Now, next. Okay, now safety depth and safety contour. Please do go out onto this uh, YouTube channel of mine. I will have to recall it's one of the channel. You can it's free. It's free on YouTube. I've explained everything. Whatever you ask me, safety depth, safety contour. I have 
done the calculation step by step and explained it in such a manner that you will be able to distinguish and distim uh, 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 differentiate between the safety depth and safety contour. Because if I have to do it, I like to explain the whole thing together. And the mantra for that is, we guys today talk about safety depth and safety contour. It is actually coming from a minimum controlling depth. And that's where you differentiate between the safety depth and the safety contour. So, uh, who's that Mr. Naresh? You have my uh, number, you come back to me, I'll give you a detailed explanation in case. If I have to take a separate lecture, I will even do that. Please lay off, uh, lay on to me all the queries you may have because your queries, your feedback is a food for thought for me. And none of us is a walking encyclopedia, as I said earlier, which will help me to customize the lecture, even much more detailed lecture as per your request. The lecture is very basic. Most of our mariners with years of ship handling management are requested to please concentrate on the technical aspect for ship handling. All other gyan be given to cadets. Okay, sir, Mr. Pradeep, tell me what I can do for you, sir. Tell me. Uh, because uh, within 35, 40 minutes, as you know, I cannot explain the whole ship handling unless you have a specific question, Pradeep. You have a specific question, specific maneuver. Please ask me. I will rattle it to you right away. So this ship handling, hydrodynamics dynamics is such a vast subject. I'm doing it for last one and a half month. It will take me another two months to complete. That also will not be complete because it's got a vast horizon. So I would ask Mr. Pradeep, you have any doubt about any particular maneuver, please ask me. I can explain you in a very short nutshell. And thereafter, if you want, I can follow up in an upcoming lecture catered to your queries, sir. Can you share your YouTube channel details? Right, uh, Mr. Ankur Varma, my YouTube channel, you need to go to the search engine. Please type Marine Quest Solutions and you'll see me, sir. Right, okay, sir. sir uh, okay. uh, I think uh, what will happen is uh, our PPT will not get finished. So let's let's finish on our presentation and then we will take the questions at the end, if, if that's fine with you, sir. Right, sir. I'm okay because the questions are coming. I thought we should no, do I the justice to the to the attendees and encourage them, sir. Uh, encourage well, them. Well, that's the reason. Questions will get answered while you uh, do your PPT as well. So, so yes, sir. But otherwise, we'll not finish our PPT. That's my humble. Understood, sir. Understood, sir. Okay. So <laughs> now uh, coming to this uh, PPT, I will now ask Captain Gaurav. Uh, our moderator has advised me that the time is short, so I will go now bullet points. Uh, gentlemen, all the ship handling and the, the hydrodynamics, what I have coming up is basis, my pragmatic and practical experience, because trust me, probably I was lucky enough to do all these types of maneuvers. I'm also going to come, if you have seen my lecture number 13, I'm also going to come up with a special maneuver of an FIPSO, because I've handled uh, uh, Afra Max, Suez Max, disconnectable, left hand, twin screw, uh, uh, FIPSOs, where uh, commissioning uh, uh, and disconnection. Disconnection means uh, they used to be in a uh, commission in the area where the storm used to come. And the last maneuver I'd done was this was in uh, 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 off Philippines, of Palawan, Shell Malampaya oil field, where the storms used to uh, come from the Pacific and then recurve towards uh, China or Japan. So once a week, sometimes twice a week during stormy weather, I used to disconnect and connect this. So I've done those types of maneuver also, which I will share with you as a legacy. Now, all maneuvers in ship handling is explained in a detailed manner and uh, through the mantra of e-learning, as what Captain Gaurav said, that today this is the mantra and I concur with that. And that is the reason we are coming up here. So. If you gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have any queries, please do come to me on any of these podiums. And uh, now, uh, Captain Gaurav, you're changing the slides. So should I start working on them as and how it goes? Okay. Uh, uh, Sorry. Sir. Uh, lectures are customized now, as I said earlier, 
that uh, I upload uh, every lecture after a span of three or four days because I wait for the feedback. So once whatever feedback I get, because I already, uh, you know, uh, send my kind of a index or a quorum that what I'm going to impart, uh, which I had done it in my lecture number 13 on YouTube that, okay, these things I'll explain. So uh, after every lecture, I give three, four days gap so that people can come back to me with the queries, what more they want to know for the previous lecture or the upcoming lecture, which really helps me to customize the lecture as per their request and feedback. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, just wanted to make a, a humble suggestion, of course, as you would appreciate that there is no substitute for the first and practical knowledge because, uh, uh, as I said, because I had perhaps done all those things and I could be confident enough to answer your questions sitting over here. Uh, but uh, yes, as I said, after doing so many practical things, I had written this book of hydrodynamics, which is approximately around 550 pages. Initially, when I uh, in the month of February, I was thinking to to uh, you know uh, publish it, but then I said no, it's not right. This COVID-19, so many things. So why don't I uh, you know do something, uh, share it with my uh, fr fraternity, my mariners for free, and that's where I came to, came to this podium. So. Uh, so, uh, I believe we are getting the first hand information. Uh, of course, uh, there is no dearth, there is no end to learning because we always learn something new. And probably, I'm also learning loads of things from my candidates, uh, from my audiences when they ask me some questions. Like, for example, I, I'll share with you. Uh, one of those lectures, I, I don't recall which number or what was the subject matter. I, I was preparing it and then suddenly, it was regarding SPM Moore, I, I recall. It was regarding SPM Moore. Uh, uh, I was preparing it and then suddenly I got some messages on WhatsApp pertaining to this and then I had to customize. So that's definitely, you guys are also my teacher. I'm not your teacher. I may be, you know, for a short term perspective, but you guys, when you give me the feedback, it really helps me to help you so we are a team together without you we are nothing we need you as much as you need us walking the talks taking forward uh in an optic opti uh, optimistic manner as i said earlier that you know i still have regard for my seniors captain revari joseph uh, all my uh, you know senior masters my mates when i was a cadet second mate third mate etc because of them which gave me something that, okay, you know, this is a, like, it's, it's a normal human nature. The way you're treated, you treat the other guy the same way. I was treated in such a manner that I was taught. Mm -hmm. So I thought like, you know, I must do the same thing, other justice to my fe fellow mariners and my fraternity. And that's how I came into with this idea. Well, Resh, I'll leave it to you. Uh, being an uh, uh, entrepreneur and uh, uh, being a, uh, whatever I've endured into and, uh, Furthermore, uh, I'll share one small thing what Captain um, Gaurav had, had introduced me to that, yes, uh, you know, somewhere down the line, I don't know how many of us will agree with this or not. Because when we stay six months out at sea or seven months out at sea, uh, our profession is amongst the top 10 rated professions. I hope I know all of us will agree. But because of the seclusion, in a secluded environment, what we live in, Many a times we become a frog in a well. And that's where, trust me, that gave me the zeal, the courage to try to entrepreneur across a fence and break the shackles. Because when we talk about it, you know, uh, uh, our communication skills or whatever it is, the personality, the personoa, the way we present ourselves, we may be very learned man, but how can we express ourselves? And that's something which really motivated me to try to break the shackles and go to the media and you know whatever i could do which definitely had been my you know kind of a, maybe an enterprising to endure an endeavor into an entrepreneurship i think that's all i can say in a nutshell that uh, i've tried my level best in each and every horizon i've been a uh, a marketing manager, I've uh, uh, worked with the media, I've worked with the 
a few television serials. This is just not to share with you. It's not a subject, but then just to break the shackles, just to break the shackles. And when I'm coming to this part of it, yes, I'm not a media conscious person. And that's how it gave me a thought because I also would like to bring it to your kind notice that the moment I start my lecture, it may be 24, 23 minutes. There is no retake, start and stop, finish. Because I've already you know, thought about the subject matter I'm going to impart with, uh, with you all guys. And uh, yes, uh, sharing is a mantra because they say, if you know something, you must share it because you don't know what will happen to, uh, tomorrow because nobody can predict life. So if there is something you have, you have learned from any profession or anything like how we, uh, you know, pass on our experience or share our knowledge and advise our children and guide them accordingly. It is a similar kind of modus operandi what we are doing. Here. So care and share is must. And uh, uh, regarding my watch experience, I will not say that I leave it to you all guys to decide that how much <laughs> I'm underwater, how much do I know or how much do I know, I, I do not know. Uh, please do visit my lectures and then come to me on the subject matter. Because to best of my knowledge, my aptitude, and of course, with my positive, proactive attitude, which takes the predominance over and above everything, I have managed to impart with whatever I can do best under the given circumstances. Had I been, had this COVID-19 not been there, probably I would have been going to the college to, you know, have one-to-one -one communication. Probably I would have been able to deliver much better. But under the given circumstances, I, I, whatever I could do, I, I, I've done it. I leave the results to your or judgment with you all guys. You see how it is. And of course, in any kind of, a, uh, you know, a, a kind of a poor, at any podium, uh, a two-way communication is uh, is as must other uh, because one is a monologue. That's the reason. When I looked at few questions, I, I felt obligated with permission of Captain Gaurav that I must answer that, sir. So. Uh, uh, Captain Gaurav, there are a few questions coming, sir. Can I answer them or you would like to take? No, no, sir. Sure, sir. We can answer. I, I guess if your uh, uh, PPT is done, I think you can take the questions now and then we can go on this uh, fun final slide. Sir. Yeah. Please, sir. Go ahead. Sir. Okay, sir. The Mr. D.K. Mishra has asked, when passing, for example, Singapore Strait, I find that there, after watching radar continuously for 10 minutes, really fills me so much information it becomes confusing thereafter i look beyond the bridge it is so simple to maneuver uh, i don't know dk mishra sahab is uh, what rank but yes what i would do i have done it uh, you know uh, we all have been through singapore straits it's basically what i understand mishra sahab situational awareness when i i'm talking about myself i'm not trying to teach you please don't get me wrong uh, when I look at the radar, I get to know the situation awareness. And I tell my duty officer that your job is to give me a positive identification of the object. So I'm looking at the radar. I'm looking at the horizon. I delegate my duty officer that, okay, this uh, radar object bearing this degree and so many days, so much distance off, you just spot it and tell me. And then I see it physically, visually. That gives me a consolation and I know that I have a better situation awareness because I'm cross-checking. I'm checking on radar. I'm taking information from the disk. I'm also getting it verified with my duty officer. Then I know, okay, now everything is okay. My situation awareness is pretty handsome. So I believe, Mishra Saab, have I been able to answer? So I believe that, I, I guess, if, uh, just a suggestion, Mishra Saab, uh, please try maybe... Uh, you may find, uh, you know, be uh, to be on a better wicket, sir. Then, Mr. Android, Blue Droid, okay? You have mentioned 12 lectures. Uh, sorry. You have mentioned 12 lectures so that about further lectures, how and where to access them, continue accessing your further lectures. Sir, Mr. Android, the thing is, I've uh, imparted 12 lectures from 13 lecture onwards. I've mentioned this even on my PowerPoint. Please visit the podium, the site on which I'm from 13 lecture onwards. I'm, I'm uploading the lectures is on www.emarineacademy.com. However, 
you will find my 13, 14, 15 lecture also. That will be kind of a preamble where I am already stating that the subject matter I will be explaining followed by the detailed lecture on this site. And I'm always, I'm not going to leave the YouTube. I'm going to uh, give us uh, four or five or six minutes of preamble. So the people who are coming to it, they know we are, they are supposed to be guided to because their, uh, you know, eMarine Academy, what I understand, their video presentation is much, much better. And they do a lot of IT thing and they, you know, uh, 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 from the presentation point of view. So that's the reason I'm uh, suggesting you. But yes, please do follow the YouTube where you will see my all lectures and it will guide you which podium you need to go to, sir. Mr. Pradeep, can you please say about sea life where it is good to settle ashore? for a job like say before 40 or so if you like sailing must continue to sail what are the pros and pros and cons of sailing uh sir i'll tell you uh you know uh, there, there used to be poetry in our time you know which used to say uh the call of sea the call of sea is a wild call in which all the sailors fall. Trust me, today I got off uh, on my, from my last vessel, 31st of January. I still have the zeal to go back because I see, it seemed like I, I missed something. But yes, we all work for our family. Of course, uh, until COVID settles down, of course, as uh, to, you know, what I understand, I'm not making a, uh, you know, uh, uh, passing a verdict or making a judgment against somebody, people who have gone, God bless them, Jai Mahathati, they should be safe and sound. But yes, my perspective is that I would wait uh, for some more time for COVID to settle down. And I will, as what you said, Mr. Pradeep, Pradeep, yes, at the age of 40, if you'd like, you can go. But I tell you what, uh, if you're a master and you're getting a superintendent job, I'll share with you. Because I worked as a superintendent, but not sitting superintendent. I've inspected 650 plus ships. That is when I'm on leave. Because what happens? I guide all my uh, subordinates that if at 40 you are offered a superintendent job, you you are rugged in for one and a half, two years, and then you recall Nayar. I think I should go back to sea because you know the the money etc is not so good over here. Trust me, that is a bit too late because then you're construed as a deactivated master. So whatever decision you take, you make sure that, you know, you're financially well sound. I hope I've answered your question, Mr. Prati. Uh, Mr. Android, where to go, where to get your book on ship handling? Android, sir, the thing is that uh, I have not yet published the book. I'm giving this podium for free to all my mariners because as I said earlier, I did think about in the month of February to, uh, uh, you know, uh, publish the book. But then I found it's not just. It's not just. So I must do, you know, part on my whatever little knowledge I have to my fellow mariners. Sir. Yes, sir. Any question, Captain uh, Gaurav? No, sir. I think uh, more or less we're done with the questions. Uh, I think just one last couple of things. Uh, uh, which I would like to just advise everyone that, um, you know, like Captain Puneet has done, uh, if you have any uh, skill, if you have any talent which you would want to showcase, uh, it could be if you are interested in writing blogs, uh, if you have informational videos to show, if you have any products uh, which you would want to showcase, uh, any services you would want to showcase, connect with CN Beyond. We will help you in evaluation of that idea. We'll have multiple discussions and we will give you a platform uh, for you to uh, showcase um, uh, your, your, your talent as such. So I think uh, that was pretty much it. The last uh, part is if you can just have a feedback from all of you um, on, uh, on how did you feel about the session, were your expectations met? How would you rate the session and uh, what are your thoughts on uh, your platform uh, or your talent art platform idea? Uh, uh, I'll leave the... Can, can I answer Rajendra K. Apte, sir? Sure, sir. Sure, sir. While, while we have the answers coming in, you may please answer. Uh, Rajendra Apte, sir. Good afternoon. I've seen your thing, the topic of webinar and what was talked about are two different 
completely different topics. In fact, the talk today is not a top I see at all. Just some general aimless chattering. Very disappointed. I apologize for your disappointment, sir. As you say, that as I said earlier, there was another one or two gentlemen asked me the similar question. Our podium was here to guide the uh, candidates, the students, that okay, you can come to this podium and what all things and what are per, what are perseverance uh, uh, which we have taken to arrive to this conclusion that how we can help our fellow mariners to uh, uh, on the subject matter. But I hope, uh, Aptis Sahib, you would appreciate that if we had to start talking about the hydrodynamics, which I have already imparted step by step throughout the lectures. If I had to do this here, probably this will be going on for another 10 hours. Sir. So this was just uh, uh, basically, you know, uh, a subjugated subject of matter, which has been passed on to us, uh, to you all, sir. And uh, for your knowledge, yes, you do visit me. If you have any counter on the subject matter, I would be humble to, to respond to you, sir. And as I say, uh, said earlier, I was giving loads, loads, giving loads of counter which were, I found them were not, uh, you know, appropriate. And I gave them all the explanations. And I tell you, Mr. Apte, many of things what I've explained over here, and I can probably bet on it that you may not find in many books and even in www sites. I'm pretty confident because whatever I'm importing is nothing uh, hypothetical. It is pure practical, sir. Thank you, sir, after sir. But if you have any queries, please do approach me, sir. Uh, Captain uh, Gaurav, uh, anything else, sir? Just, just uh, thank you, sir. Thank, thanks a lot. Sorry, I, we've had a result of the polls which we took, and um, I guess there are a few expectations which were not met, but uh, about 60, 68 percent of the people they say that their expectations were met, and uh, I think uh, there was an average uh, about say 36 plus 30, about 60 percent, 65 percent say that the session was good to excellent. And uh, the impact of uh, your talent, our platform uh, idea, I think uh, we had a fairly encouraging response over there as well. So, so I think, uh, 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 thank you everyone for uh, attending this session. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Captain Puneet. I think the, you have, um, you know, an ocean of uh, knowledge and uh, um, your initiative of sharing the uh, idea, the, uh, sharing your knowledge uh, across to uh, everyone is uh, really uh, well appreciated and uh, thank you for uh, for that sir um, uh, and then we, we, we hope to bring uh, 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 you know similar talent similar uh, uh, ideas to the four to the mariners as well uh, the, the YouTube uh, links for Captain Puneet's uh, sessions are on the screen and we will also send an email out. for. Yes, please. That would be great because probably that may, you know, answer few candidates. I respect the consent because without that, we cannot improvise Captain Gaurav. If you can pass on all the links to Cap Mr. Apte and all the candidates who have the queries, probably they, uh, you know, find it easier to scroll through and thereafter, uh, whatever the qu further queries they have, they are more than welcome to, to contact me, sir. Right, sir. I think we will end the session now. Thanks for uh, uh, the feedback. And, and uh, to all, we will send the YouTube channel name, uh, uh, the links of it uh, in the email as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Right, sir. We will just log off in the next uh, two, three minutes. Then I'll keep the platform on for another uh, two, two minutes. Yes, sir. In case there are some immediate questions to be answered, uh, if you think so, Captain uh, Gaurav, if there are two, three minutes. Thanks, Ravita. Apologies. Haji, uh, Captain Gaurav. Uh, A uh, few people are Captain Gaurav asking YouTube channel. Uh, 
uh, you can mention them, uh, Marine Quest Solutions, if you'd like to write that. Right, sir, I've, I've done that. I've done that, sir. Thank you, sir. Right, so uh, thank you everyone for your time. Uh, we will now close the webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, and thank you all, gentlemen. Thank you very much. I want to ask Master Pilot to respond? Uh, Captain Pradeep has asked me a question. I don't know. Here, want to ask Master Pilot responsibility? Is it clear? Responsibility always rests with the master. Can I answer this, uh, Captain Nagoro, before we uh, disconnect? Please, please, please. Okay, Captain Pradeep, uh, thanks for your heads up. This, these kind of things help me that we can share the practical knowledge. Uh, yes, sir, of course. Uh, to be honest, uh, Pilot, uh, uh, whenever he steps on board, I'll share with, from my perspective, uh, I'm not gonna uh, you know, talk about anybody else. Uh, it will be certainly uh, uh, from uh, my pers uh, perspective. If I have two minutes, Captain, uh, Captain uh, Gaurav, I need to give one small example, a live example. Can I do that, sir, with your permission? Captain Gaurav. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. We have a minute okay. or two and uh, then we'll have to Okay. Do I'll give you one small example which will give you the result. I was there in uh, Port Ben Carson. This was 2015. When India-Pakistan firing was going on, of course, we are a bona fide and from heart Indians. I was supposed to take the vessel into the, you know, uh, pilot station. The pilot comes on board. And of course, with a, with a very, uh, uh, very uh, nasty attitude. He comes on board and... Uh, we were entering the channel. He was first uh, 20 minutes, you know, hovering around here and there. And then uh, after 20 minutes, he tells me, Captain, I have to do my prayer. So I said, okay, uh, pilot, please go this way. And that's no problem. I had already entered the Port, Port Ben Kasim channel. He took another uh, 20, 25 minutes. I said, okay, fine, no problem. Then when he comes, he starts making some hassle. And mind you, I was in Pakistan. So I said, uh, Pilot, let me tell you one thing. There's a cabin down below. You can go down to the cabin and don't bloody well come and ask me to sign your papers. I'm a mooring master. I need a tub. And I can bring her alongside. And I'll report to you to the authorities. Gentlemen, within span of five minutes, it was all topsy-turvy. So all I'm trying to say in a nutshell, as a master, we need to exercise the authority given, provided to us by the ISM, Master's Overriding Authority. As long as it is justified and we are exercising due diligence, honestly speaking, if I am well within my rights and I can justify and I have exercised all my due diligence, I will do it. And I, I'm not proud to say that, but yes, I've exercised this umpteen number of times. So this probably will answer I think most of your queries. So uh, from my, my point of view that, you know, uh, the era from where we come from, uh, we go straight, straight. I, I'm, I'm not saying other people do not, but then you got to get your uh, priorities right as far as the safety, security of the vessel is concerned and including the environmental uh, protection policies. Sir. Yes, Captain Nankoro. Right, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thanks for your uh, advice. Thanks for your suggestion. Thanks for your answer. Appreciate a lot, sir. Thank, thanks uh, so much for your time, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good day, sir. All right, yes. Thank you so much. Thanks to all the participants for, uh, uh, for spending two hours uh, with us. Uh, thanks for taking the time out. Thanks for registering for the webinar. Appreciate all your time. Thank you, sir. Good day, sir.